shout out Good Hits TV, the number one station the in the entire world oh. on the internet. I don't know why I'm counting on my fingers. I'm not even like listing anything. What's up, man? Game. Big day today. We're in Williamsburg at the Giglio Festival, and these are some hardworking people. They've been throwing this festival for years, and we're talking about some rappers who've been in the game for years. We're talking about Ashley and the one and only Bromaine God, the underground OG. He's on tour with Spider Gang right now. We're talking about all of their favorite songs, Elephant, Daylight, the drama going on, the underground rap scene. Got it's an all encompassing on interview. Sit back, relax, yeah, you know, stay tuned. Yeah. It's yeah. volume seven, well, episode four. It's a blessing I get to do this every day. Peace. Yeah, I would need a lot from you. Yeah, I understand. I do need some time for you. Ooh, what's up, good? It's getting you know we're about. We're bleeding the block for the best underground rap here in New York City and beyond. We got two underground kings in the fucking cut. One of them is an outer towner. He's coming from OT, as they say in New York. We got Ashley. We got Bromaine God in the cut. This has been long overdue. Let's start out simple, guys. I said we're going to start out simple. How you guys doing, man? It's Wonderful. been a crazy couple of years for everybody. Like, how's how how like how's shit going? You're visiting New York, yeah. Brumling God, you moved here recently. <sighs> things are fucked, dude. <laughs> I think things are wonderful. The culture is degrading <laughs> no, day by day, and there's just so much pressure on my back <laughs> all the time, man. Dude, that is fact. Do you do you actually mean that? Mean that? Like, are are you talking about like the underground rap scene, or are you talking about the city in uh, general? Talk about society. <laughs> Dude, have you seen the new Batman movie? Yes. Yes. That shit was That's hard. what you remind me of when you're saying I actually saying liked that, that a lot. That shit was a cool, like, 7 out of 10 yeah. to me. I thought that movie was a 10 out of 10. Yeah, okay. Okay. Fucking okay. bullshit, bro. He was just, like, so scary the whole fucking time. I thought that was so tight. I thought it was cool that he was emo and goth as fuck because it kind of, like... He's more like a rich kid, like he should be, you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. how, like, he would act if he was really, like, a that's rich facts. ass little kid. That's facts. I didn't even think of that. Like Ashley, do you brat. see yourself ever moving to New York, or are you... I was planning on it, kind of, yeah. but, like, there's some, like, label shit that I have to figure out first. Word, word, word. Yeah. Uh, are you born and raised L.A.? I guess yeah. I didn't even get into that. Yeah. So you're from L.A., born, born out raised, there. Yeah. What part of L.A.? Because L.A. is, like, I went to Coachella two weekends ago, and mm -hmm. I feel like L.A. is, like... A collection of cities. I'm just like, New York is just so much more densely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what it's part of LA are you as from? Fuck out here. No, I'm from Mid City. That's like right in the middle of LA. Like, Crenshaw and Adams is like where it's like the central. It's two streets where like my family is all around. How do you like growing up there? You like it oh, as I a city? It. Okay. Yeah. I, I I was like mad inside all the time. So. Yeah. It was fine. I was a nerd. How was how was your neighborhood? Was it like mixy out there, or was it like a chill suburban feel? Like um oh no, definitely not the suburbs. Like I'm I'm I'm, I'm in the middle of the city, but okay, I wasn't very. I, I really wasn't around town like that growing up. Like I was really inside all the time. I feel that. Like I feel doing that. Sh like nerd shit. You know? When did you when did you kind of start making music? Um, actually, that's one of the things I was doing. I, I started I started playing music when I was in elementary school. Oh, so shit. I, I okay. played music for I don't know how many years that is. Up from that point up until like college, I played instruments like classical okay. percussion and stuff like that, marching band, all that shit, jazz, symphony, Afro Cuban that. music, all that. Shit. That was like my whole life up until college, and I just stopped. Yeah. Are you Afro Cuban? No, no, no. I'm okay. black and Filipino. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, shit. Word, word, word. She. She. Um, um, are you from? And then, Romaine, you're from the West Coast too, right? I'm not making that shit up. I'm LA. Nice. Where I'm we from talking? the Bay Area. Bay Area. How'd you guys link up? Because you guys have music together. He used so. to live in San Francisco. Oh yeah, I went to school out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. where I met him. I just met him through some other people I knew. Right, right, right. Um, Timmy before Swag. you moved to New How York, you? were you in? Were you? <laughs> Dare you? Yeah, now you gotta silence talk about that. Wait, could you that is, that is, that tell is me not, in detail? Exist. Tell me in detail how y'all linked up. Like, I'll tell you. Yeah. You 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 say nothing. I'll tell you. You just have to mention it. You can't ruin it. That that never comes out. Okay, I'll tell you exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly how we met. I was in school. I'd already given up on music. I'm a responsible nigga. I was like in school. What school? For, Wait, what school? I went to San Francisco State. Okay, I yeah, finished, yeah, but I went there. Yeah, yeah. I, I had what? I have one class left to do. I just didn't do it because I hate school so much. But um, I was making like fake music, like rap music that was not real or good. And um, uh, Chris somehow caught wind of it through like my friends. 
And so I met him at this house. Actually, I don't think I ever told you this. Um, but uh, I went to the crib, and he was there. I went to, like, the homie's crib, and he was there. <laughs> and he was like, yo, I'm going to make a beat for you. You want to get on it? And I'd only ever made two songs in my so life. So you go into the crib, and Bromade's just, like, posted up, yeah, chilling, he was there. like, yeah. smoking a doobie and, like, making beats yeah. and shit. I have, well, I, we, have, we have a mutual fe- friend named Jacob, um, formerly known as Running Fades. Mm. Now he's Jacob Michael, Jacob 26. Right, um, right. He made beats. And I was just like, I'm just, I, I honestly was just bored. So I was like, I'm going to make a song. And so I made one or two songs. And then we just like promoted the fuck out of it. Not really. We just like made a thriller or like whatever it is. And then it got around the bay because everything gets around the bay like pretty like decently. And then I think he, he like had seen it from there. I saw then. it. Yeah, they just showed it to me. Yeah, they showed it. Probably showed it to him. And then I came over and he was like, I'm going to make you a beat. And I only made two songs. So I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to like successfully make a song on that. I don't even I, think I actually made you a beat at any point. No, yeah. You, no, you like, had I one. I said that I was going to. I had one that I had already made. Yeah, it was like pre-made. Yep. And then I left the crib and <laughs> our friend, our, our, modern, our friend, a modern day Basquiat friend was like, do you know uh, yeah. who that was? Did I ever tell you this? Uh, Somebody that we don't like was like, do you know who that was who wanted to work with you? That was bro man God. What? <laughs> Bro, go is that clouded? You would nah, have been He had like 2,000 followers on SoundCloud. I feel like they might have like acted like they didn't know who I was on some shit. But yeah. Like, it was oh weird. I was like, oh, that's And then they were like, whoa, this is so cool. Like, just showing yeah. them shit for the first time. <laughs> so. No, it was super weird. How is the rap scene out in the Bay? I never hear about it. Is there like a thriving little rap community out there or I not? I have no idea. <laughs> no, I was a fake I have rapper. An idea. <laughs> I have an idea of it. Like, it exists, but it's not really going to like leave right. that's true actually you I, know, mean, I, I agree with that. i feel that that's how that. i would put it did you live out in la for a bit yeah i lived with this fool well i, I moved in with darky and corpse in like 2020 right and right. then ended up moving in with him because everybody spread out type shit that's Word. how we actually became friends yeah he, he came up to visit he moved down to la and then he came up to visit family in the bay and then covid hit right when he came up to visit and darky was like not trying to have him come back in the middle of COVID, like understanding yeah. stuff. So. Right. so he stayed with me at my house, and that's when I stopped. Like I was still making like stupid rap just because it was funny, and I just like there was nothing. It's gone. It's not on the internet. There's you can't find it. So it's what's your favorite type of like sound? Because I feel like you have songs that are almost like R and B influenced, and then you well, have, yeah, and I, then you have like like my favorite works from you is like more like party oriented. Like yes, well. People who are going to get this interview are going to get it like a few weeks later. But yeah. we had the concert yeah. on Friday, and you had like one song that was like a it could be like a club banger, like an EDM yeah. type yes feel to it. Yes. No. When he was staying with me, he, he essentially was like, "You can actually sing, so you should stop making new yeah. music because you might actually like be able to do something with music." And so obviously I like listen because he's hella good. So I was like, oh, That's yeah, the daylight. song I was talking about. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So when I started singing, I was just like. I like to I don't listen to the music that I make really I just was like trying to get the most use out of my voice and so I felt like pop music was like the best so you don't you don't you put out music you don't listen to it I listen to my music because I'm a narcissist okay but that's I don't what like most rappers say is it yeah bro man do you listen to yours when you yeah I, I mean I feel like that's a natural response. it's honestly it's not even because I like it it's just because I want to ensure that my catalog is the way I want it to be yeah but like I don't yeah, even yeah. I'm not gonna say I don't Actually, yeah, no, I love my own music, but I don't listen to the genre of music that I make necessarily. Yeah. yeah. Outside of like Juice World, who's like a, was like a big influence for like how I was trying to write at the very least. But what are some of your like top? I don't want to say influences, but like, who's on your like Spotify rap? Like, who are some of the artists you kind of listen to on like a weekly basis? Mm. Other than yourself. Yeah. Obviously. No, definitely at the time. I find that I don't re- really listen to music that much anymore, so I'm gonna speak more towards like. I, I, it comes in waves. Like I listen to music a lot in waves. So like, typically when I when I was like developing what I wanted to do it was definitely Juice World, right? Echo 2K, right. Him especially, uh, my friend Jacob that I mentioned, Jacob Michael. Him as in Bromain? Yeah, Bromain. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I find a lot of inspiration from like trying to copy my friends. Like my my That's ideology. Real. That is no, real. For real. I love how you're real. like. Up front, because yeah. people be doing that, and they're like, "I have." It's just like, dude, yeah. it's okay to be influenced by other people. Well, because that's the thing. Like, <laughs> I don't try and copy from a standpoint of replicating it. I just know that my voice in itself is unique. So if I try and copy someone, even if I'm trying as hard as I can to make it as close to what he, it's not gonna sound that way. 
And so once it once it like comes out, it's gonna sound like me right. regardless of what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? Like lots of there was this one song that I made. I was listening to PPG Casper for a little bit. Yes, dude. Yeah. Shout out shout out PPG Casper. Yeah, he's super Not, hard. And I I I love Casper, but I yeah. like his like PPG Casper stuff. His newer stuff that's like with Travis Barker and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not it for me. It's like too LA pop punk type yeah. shit. I love Blink One Eighty Two just as much as the mm-hmm. next guy, but I think he's at his best when he was making songs like Paris Hilton and like that yeah. was like. No, he's definitely. I respect the evolution. I like. I like both. He things, still puts it out occasionally. Yeah, he I'm puts like, out a little shit. I actually like that he's making like. Mainstream, more mainstream shit with like sprinkles of what he like still does. But like my the first song that I ever released, I was like quite literally trying to like replicate that inflection that he has because I really liked it and it sounds yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. like him. But that's what I, that's why I did that. You know what I mean? Because like I knew it would come out in my voice because it's me singing it anyway. So like I, I just try like to have healthy references and like go for like the level of like excellence, so to speak. Yeah. And then like it's my voice is gonna shine through regardless, so it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like. I feel that. I feel that. Yeah. Romain, tell me your your approach to like. I want to say like your approach to music, but that's mad broad. It's so broad your for appro- me right now. <laughs> your approach to just like writing and like getting in the stew and making music. Like, are you just chilling and then taking like a dump and then have an, a concept in your head and then you implement it, or do you get in the studio and like bring a pen and a paper? Like, what's kind of that approach for you? I just get random ideas in my head every once in a while and that they all can like apply to like a certain goal at the end of the day. I feel it. And I usually take like fucking just days to think about Mm -hmm. shit and then I like build a song out of it and then I'll freestyle, I'll fill in some things that are just relevant, like just use my imagination at that point. Do you, do you, do you record in studios or do you do more bedroom setup i do like, bedroom shit okay like really shitty bedroom setup like i'd have like my blanket over my head and i like just plug my mic straight into my computer yeah. no interface or anything like that what do you like doing more making beats and doing the production side or being a rapper um if you want to call yourself an artist let's just say artist oh no i make a hell of different shit so it's pro- probably the music side of it more yeah. than the production side of it like i like making beats and shit like that but most of the time i don't even really hit my own beats like that i just like to make them because i get bored you know right there i be asked times because on I friday you like put out that, that beat and you were like this is my motherfucking beat and you kind of just let it play out yeah, for yeah, a little yeah. bit wait Friday. The concert. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Dark Souls beat. The, yeah, the fucking Bloodborne <laughs> beat. Yeah, me and my homie Avi made that beat. And we just, like, kind of went crazy on it. So occasionally I'll rap on my own production when I think it's, like, spectacular enough, you know what I mean? But When he's spectacular enough for himself. <laughs> yeah, well, if I'm spectacular enough for myself, then... I'll yeah, be able you're, to you're make not gonna market that shit beat. on my the own. The top beat, yeah. end stuff you just get exactly. Beat. I get all the best shit that I make. You know what I mean? And then everything <laughs> else just can go to like people that I fuck with who I like that. less I good that. shit. I guess. Um, <laughs> the people I fuck with that make less good shit. No, I didn't say make. I said like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. Brewing. Talk to me about this past Friday show. Like, is is a promoter? Is that a part of your title now? Like, what do you? Because I, I thought the show was successful. Like, I thought it was pretty dope. Yeah, I think it'll be a while before I ever, like, throw a show that I'm not, like, performing at, you know, but, so I wouldn't necessarily be called some promoter, but <laughs> That's facts. I definitely That's see facts. how, like, easy it can be to do something like that, you know, so. Yeah, dude, That's my there's definitely an comment. appetite for it in New York. Um, and speaking of that, are you, you're going to be going on tour soon. When does that, yes. when does that start? Like, July 19th if i had to like just vaguely remember i'm pretty sure it's the 19th that's what i remember telling everybody so Uh, actually are you gonna be on this tour were you on the tour last time i was on the whole last one you were on the whole one yeah because i went to a new york show and i remember that's the one time because he didn't open because we had oh really openers that night Mm -hmm. yeah there was like out of the like 30 or 40 whatever how many shows there was only like two or three that i didn't open because there was like other people yeah that we had just planned like way ahead of time yeah shit so I just did I did every other place where they didn't know anyone. Yeah. That was kind of my role. But you were there. Yeah, no, I performed every other. I was, was there. He was the on whole the bus time, and shit. Like, like he was yeah. with everybody hanging out. What guys, shit. you got to give me give me at least <laughs> one story, a little anecdote. Uh, like how was the tour, bro? I broke my fucking leg. What? Yeah. Did broke, you perform after or Yes. Or no? I did not <laughs> that show. Every night. But like I broke my fucking leg. I'm I was so bad, and I'm pissed too because I realized it was because of the security guard. 
I didn't know that. The fact that you broke your leg brought you to your whole like current oh, performance yeah. style to the. It was a blessing. No, I actually consider it a blessing. It is hurt. that why you sit during some of your performances? Yes. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was fire. Yeah. Like, we needed that moment because it was getting too like moshy. Everybody and then always like, wants yeah. to be loud uh, as fuck. Like, every that's time. why I was like, I got to interview <laughs> Ashley because it was like, this is what I'm vibing with. No, I appreciate that. Like, motherfuckers be going too crazy nowadays. Yeah, I used to be mad and secure about that, honestly. I was very insecure about the fact that everybody makes like lit shit and I just can't do that. I have a very sweet, kind voice. I, I can rap, and I can rap, you know, mm -hmm. but like, it has to really align musically for me to put it out and like be okay with it like oftentimes i'll end up like pitching my voice up or some shit like that yeah, like, yeah, yeah but yeah. um but yeah i broke my leg in illinois i jumped in the crowd i'm a, I'm, I'm very athletic wait you know you and broke I, it in the middle of a show yeah no in the middle of my set yeah i guess i should have assumed that if you break yeah. it on tour I, but i just assumed well, I just it would just be like yeah. i don't know like you fell or something walking up yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah no it was like a five and a half foot fence and i jumped over it easily Easily, actually, I just put one foot on it and I just jumped like ten. Were feet you in the there? Air. Did you yeah, see this happen? Yeah, I saw it happen. I was like, oh fuck. Yeah, it was terrible. And then when I jumped out, there was like a security guard on the railing, and I it was a basketball injury. It's which is so funny. I like landed on his foot and like rolled my ankle out. Oh. And just <laughs> fucked my whole shit up. It was a sprain, but there were so many fractures. Oh, so it was an it, ankle yeah. sprain. It was a sprain, but I it, it was also fractures, and it was oh, a lot shit. of fractures to where the doctor was like, we're just gonna consider this a break because you fractured it in so many places. So your ankle was just enormous, yeah. essentially. It was. Yeah. And so that's when I learned that performing on a stool was actually kind of fire. Because that's all I could do. But I feel like I get more energy sitting down. Because I'm yeah. a singer. I'm not a rapper. So like I can't really jump around. I mean, I can. I used to... I would perform with auto-tune before that. I had an auto-tune mic. Because it's hard to sing, runs, and jump while, yeah. you know what I'm saying, at the same time. But when I broke my leg, I was like, fuck it. I'm not even going to go through... I was exhausted and like in pain all the time. So I'm like, I'm not even going to set up my auto-tune mic. I'm just going to give whatever they like give me and sit on a stool. And I got the most energy from the crowd from sitting Damn. down and just like singing my actual music, you know? Damn.